and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I lost my... Okay, uh, motion to adopt the... Moved by Carabelli, support by Drillette. That's a motion to adopt the agenda. Please vote. I have a cop shop when I... Motion passes 11 to 0. Approval of the minutes dated October 10, 2019. Moved by Sauger, support by Romano. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Public, public participation. Does anyone wish to be heard? Anyone wish to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close public participation. Budget reviews, emergency management. We'll start with emergency management and um, Director Lewis. Morning, afternoon. Hi. So I'll just take a few minutes and go through what we have in the budget here. Um, Ours, not too many, uh, too many heavy changes from uh, what was in our budget last year. Um, general fund uh, comprised basically of two sections, emergency management and uh, technical services. Um, we have about $4,700 in uh, new funding requests this year on the non-personnel side. They're all on the emergency management side. Um, $3,000 of those are for maintenance requests, and that is recognizing that we currently have several systems that we are paying for the maintenance on using the Homeland Security grant funding that we are awarded by the federal government, and we are anticipating the continual decline and eventually tapering off of those expenses, so we're starting to build those into our build those expenses into our general fund budget. So there's an addition of $3,000 to cover uh, to cover a credentialing system that we use for all of our county first responders for the year. Um, we have an additional $700 requested in printing charges. Um, we've been printing a lot of um, general use uh, emergency preparedness information for distribution to members of the community. And uh, you know, in the environment that we're in, we get a lot of additional requests for those every year. So a small increase in our printing budget is warranted to make sure that we can continue handing that information out to our residents. And then we have a thousand dollar increase proposed in employee training. Um, as I think I've mentioned a couple of times when I've been here, um, we oversee the county's new employee safety program that we've been working on this year with our employee safety committee and that money will be used to help fund training for county employees to get them to more prepared for things like an active shooter event, first aid, stop the bleed, um, violence de-escalation, things of that nature. So those are the only non-personnel increases that are reflected in the emergency management and communications budget on both sides for this year. On the, on the revenue side, general fund, uh, no projected decreases for 2020, so uh, that's a very good thing. Um, our, our revenue, as you all know, can be a little bit variable because the vast majority of it is derived from service fees from our technical services division. Um, but uh, good news is we've, uh, we've worked very hard this year to implement some electronic billing practices on the tech services side. And currently, year to date, we're up almost 10% in billings over where we were at this point last year. So uh, that's, oh no, I'm sorry. We're up 10% over our three year average for billing. So we're in pretty good shape there. Um, I mean, time will tell whether that's, a, whether that's a one time issue or a trend, but it's a very good thing. We're capturing more, so um, very good on the revenue side. Um, most of the, um, most of the other, other revenue we generate is, um, is grant funded is grant funded revenue on both sides. Um, staffing, we have no staffing changes proposed for this year on the general fund. We have five full-time employees on the emergency management side 
and eight full-time employees in technical services. Um, that's the brief overview of where we're at with general fund. Um, as you know, our department also manages and is the regional fiduciary for Homeland Security Grant funds, the Urban Area Security, Security Initiative and the State Homeland Security Grant Program. Uh, we currently have six grants uh, with an active performance period uh, ongoing right now. We have the FY 2017 FY 2018 and FY 2019 Homeland Security Program grants. We have, and we have all three of those years in Operation Stone Garden. Um, each of those grants has a 36 month performance period, which is why we have three, which is why we have three grants currently open. They're in different stages. We're winding down on FY 17. That closes May of 2020. Um, FY18, we're in full swing now, that closes in 2021. And then FY2019, we're just getting underway with that now. We've received our grant agreement for that in the last 60 days. Major expenses on the grant side. Um, the vast majority of the money that's budgeted for us on the grant side is pass-through funding. Uh, as, as I said, we are the fiduciary for the entire Southeast Michigan region. So of the $6 million or so that's budgeted in um, our 350 grant fund, uh, about $5.3 million of that is passed through to the, other, to the other jurisdictions and that's required by our grant agreement. So in our services and supplies line item, that shows us almost $5.3 million. And what that is is the pass-throughs to other jurisdictions. So that's not $5.3 million that we have jurisdiction over how we expend it. Um, in our contract services line item, we have approximately $300,000. Those are expenses that we expend internally. Uh, that's contract support for the UASI board from funding that they're allocated, but we as the fiduciary enter into a contract with a contractor to manage their planning affairs with them. That's contract costs for us to um, hire a contractor that we use to do um, site and vulnerability assessments, including all of the site and vulnerability assessments and facility emergency plans for county buildings, which we're in the process of doing. And then that's um, funding to hire training and exercise consultants from our local share of the grant award. And then there's also a, a, a line item in capital outlay, and that's equipment for um, first responder specialty teams, and that's largely money that we expend from our grant fund, but is allocated from uh, we have a local planning team. It's required by grant guidance made up of first responders from all over Macomb County. It's, you know, it's us here at the county. It's local police departments, local fire departments, EMS, DPW, so on and so forth. And we are required by the state to stand up a board made up of them to decide how we expend that money. And the money in capital outlay is money that we will be expending on behalf of the LPT to buy things like first responder specialty teams equipment like ballistic protection, uh, night vision goggles, hazmat equipment, technical rescue equipment, things of that nature. Um, personnel on the Homeland Security Grant side, we have uh, two full-time personnel. They are dedicated to managing the grant on our behalf for the um, six entity, the six other entities in the UASI. So they're the, they're the financial administrative staff in our office. We have one part-time position that's uh, planning support. And then we have two vacant part-time positions that could be used in the event that we have additional planning support needs that we currently don't have at this time. Finally new for this year, this was approved late last year, we have a COPS grant from the Department of Justice. It's from their School Violence Prevention Program. And that grant was for um, $422,000 with the county providing, the county and the Macomb ISD are splitting a 25% match. And we used that funding to hire three school safety planners and they are currently going out and working with our local school districts to conduct risk and vulnerability assessments in our local schools and develop school emergency response plans for them. It's a new program. It's been very, very well received by our school partners out in the field. We've done approximately 20 assessments 
so far, and we're ramping up with several districts. By the end of the year, uh, our staff should have been out in eight districts if all of our appointments hold, getting uh, risk and vulnerability assessments done for those school districts. So the, the costs on that grant are uh, solely personnel and personnel support related. It's the, money, it's the money being used to hire the one full-time and two part-time staff that we're using to conduct those assessments. With that, that's that's my overview, and I will take questions. Thank you, Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Just uh, two questions. Sure. Uh, these this pass through money that you're talking about is five point three million dollars. Mm -hmm. We get six on the grant. You pass through five point three. The grant is typically about five. It's typically about five million every year. There's some that number is an amalgamation of some that we have left over from previous grants. That's not a one year grant number, but Yes, the grant, the grant guidance actually dictates how that, how that money gets passed through. Of the $5 million or so that we're awarded every year, Macomb County is allowed to keep roughly $520,000 of that for our own use. Why are we the main source for the pass-throughs? Who applies for the grant? Do we apply for the grant as that's, Macomb County? That's a federal DHS grant, and they pass it through and award it every year. We don't, okay. we don't apply for it. So... And the state and you have two two full time personnel dispersing that amount those amounts they they manage it's the, it's not just disbursement they manage all the paperwork okay, that goes it. along with it all the administrative requirements so why don't we just apply for the grant for our amount and let them do their we're, own we're not allowed to do so the state requires that each they have the state broken up into eight, seven regions each region is required to have one administrative agent to manage the money for all of the okay. political entities in that region. We as Macomb County volunteered to do that after Oakland County gave the responsibility up back in 2012. It was just a thought because, well, it is just a thought. If somebody else manages that, you wouldn't need two personnel to do it. The, but the personnel comes from the grant, so that's at no cost to us. And the other question I had was, uh, this $3,000 that we're losing in maintenance grant funding, mm -hmm. I, I'm taking for granted it shouldn't that you've already applied for an additional grant to cover that. We've, we've looked at all of our grant sources for that, yes. We're, and? Yes, and we, we need to start building that into the general fund budget, the funding. We're just concerned it's not going to be there. Have you applied for it? Yes. There's no, the money is awarded to us, and as I said, those monies are going down and there are competing interests. Do you know when that, you're going to be so getting that? $3,000 that we can use elsewhere, not when do they? I mean, is there a time period that you? It's an automatic. Uh, it's request? yeah. We get the awards every. We get the awards. We have gotten the awards every year, but currently there is no award on the books for 2020. Was that because we didn't ask for the grant? No, no, no. That's because there's, there's it, no it doesn't money. exist at this point. Thank you. So, so we're ahead of the. We're just trying to get out ahead of it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ha. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Excellent budget. Thank you. I just have an educational question. I was looking at internal services. Mm -hmm. In 017, it was 45K, 018, 44K, 019, 397,000. Yeah, I'm gonna to I'm me? gonna let Steve handle that one because that's a oh, county wide issue. Oh, Steve explanation. That's the addition of the indirect cost allocation in 2019. Indirect. Cost right. Allocation. So as you'll recall, I mentioned a few times where in the past the general fund departments were not being charged internal service charges from what we call the central service departments or from the indirect cost allocation. So that would include charges, uh, the value of time spent from my office, human resources, corporation council, treasurer's office, purchasing, IT, uh, Trying to think of the other central service departments, print shop, that sort of thing. So last month, we came to you with an amendment for about $28 million to the 19 budget. And it, uh, so there's a schedule that we've provided of that amendment by department. That's the increase. You'll see that across every department in the general fund. Yeah, I was just looking at. You'll see that everywhere. Next. Large question. increases everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yeah, that's a cost-neutral thing. Um, Commissioner Carabelli. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Great information. Thank you. A um, couple of quick questions. Sure. Uh, first of all, you mentioned about the half a million dollars um, on the one grant you're allowed to keep. Mm -hmm. The other grants that you have, there, I know that there's usually an administrative cost that you're allowed to 
that's, apply. That's correct, yes. My question is, just like everything else, when was the last time you guys did a study or, or finance of true cost of an employee for administering? Are we covering our cost like we're supposed to be? We are, yes. Um, we on are all, allowed to- All the grants, not just the, that one, but I'm sorry, I, I can only speak specifically to the UASI grant. But what I will say about that is we are allowed to keep up to 5% of that award for management and administrative purposes. And we bill the entire budgeted amount for the positions that handle our administrative tasks back to the grant. There's no cost to us to do that. And that's awesome. Again, I'm just saying not that particular one, but the other grants. Are we, you know, and that's not just your department, it's all departments. When we're allowed to charge back, how do we know we're actually covering what the true cost is? I guess that's an open question to Steve to take a look at uh, um, and advise us what the answer would be on that, you know. Um, the last thing I have, there's no uh, permit fees like uh, the Sierra Title III reporting facility, the hazard and stuff, we don't, companies don't pay permit fees to have any of that done, it's all free? They don't, no, they just, they file, they file the paperwork. Um, the only thing, the only thing we may be looking at for next year is there's an electronic filing system that allows companies to file those electronically We'll cover if we decide to go that route. We'll cover it from we'll cover it from what's budgeted. Okay, thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Brandon, good to see a good report. If a question and follow me a little bit. So the budget this year for training is going to be ten thousand dollars, correct? Ninety five hundred, I believe. Ninety five hundred. Yes. Okay. Um, and then I don't know if you have this sheet or not, but we were given a supplemental worksheet. Yes. Yeah, and if you go down to the bottom there. Um, you've got you've you've listed the training that's going to be taking place for 2020, the proposed training uh, conferences. Yes. The one that seems to be the most expensive is the Great Lakes Homeland Security Conference in Grand Rapids. Yes, that's correct. Is there a reason why? I mean, it, I'm not questioning. Is there just a reason why we send five people to that one? The other ones, I mean, they're out of state. Some of them, we're sending one or two. two. So that is the predominant professional conference okay. for our field in this state. Okay. So we do make provisions to send a few staff. So for example, we have an accreditation that we get in emergency management called the professional emergency manager designation. I, I have it, two of my staff members have it. Um, they can actually get credit toward their PEM for attending that conference. Okay, so that's so an important that conference. That is an important okay. conference. Now yes. the next question I have relating to that is if you see there, it says partial grant funding available. Yes. And that's on all of these things. Well, we're going to spend about, this actually adds up to 10000 mm -hmm. if you look. You got five and then, so not 9500 When you say partial grant funding, is that the total amount including the grant money, or is that the so, amount that we're taking out of the general fund to I pay for this? I will tell you that every conference listed there on that 2020 list of planned conferences training that require travel, we have been able to cover from grant funding for the past several years. Okay. The $9,500 that's in the budget would be used for training opportunities that don't require travel. That would be training that we would bring here to campus. So, for example, to improve our employee safety program, make sure that our employees here in the county are you know, getting the training they need for active shooter, homeland security, emergency management based. Okay. Well, I guess I get what I'm trying to understand is let's take the Great Lakes Homeland Security mm -hmm. Conference. I get it. You, you, it's an important yeah. event. You're sending five people up there. It looks like it's going to cost $5,000. It costs about $1,000. It costs about $1,000. That's the entire cost. The, that's the entire cost. That's the entire cost. The okay. registration fee, the travel, the hotel, that's everything. For all five people? Yes. Okay. And is that then, but we have here, it's budgeted for 5000 So it, did I miss your explanation that you were just saying that the other 4,000 goes towards? No, so my my plan would be, and forgive me if I didn't lay this out correctly in the oh, document, okay. because this said training that required travel only, so those are the ones that I listed. Okay. My assumption would be, and we have money for this in the 2019 Homeland Security Grant, okay. that those would all be covered with grant funding. Okay, from so. The, so everything listed there would be covered from grant funding, the $9,500 that's in there would be used for, for that additional training gotcha. for, okay. Fair enough. for employee okay. safety. That's where like I that. missed the, the leap in the logic. So all these training conferences, so I understand, will be pretty much covered by grant Should money. Should be, yes. The other 9500 is for training that we're going to do here in Macomb County. Yeah, and that will almost all be used in-house. Okay, yes. fair enough. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I don't see any speakers. A uh, motion to receive and file by Romano, supported by Ha. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, community corrections. 
So we have Barb. Good afternoon. Hi. How are you? Hi. Barb Kasky with Community Corrections. Um, there's uh, not a lot of explanation with our budgets. They are um, exactly what they were for the most part in uh, 2019, uh, with the exception of some increased staff costs that we're seeing across the board. Uh, that is the same case for MDOC grant dollars. So with that, because it covers a larger percentage of our staff, we did see quite a hit to programming that we had to make up somewhere. So we were able to analyze programming over the last couple of years and make some difficult decisions about eliminating some things that were poor performing. Uh, most of that impact was with our outpatient services, but thankfully we're able to fall back on Mucosa's services and, and collaborate with them more so. But in terms of the overall numbers, um, they're pretty much on target for exactly what they were in 2019. There is, it does indicate that our grant was about $50,000 more um, in 19 than what it will be in 20. That was mostly the result of money that we received halfway through the fiscal year, and that's what we're being told to do again this year. Um, because our budgets were stable, they're asking us to come back midway through the year and identify if we need more funds at that point, which we will absolutely do. Um, and no requests for additional staff this year as well. So I'll take any questions that you have. Commissioners, I don't have anybody. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So I apologize, Mike. I was going to get the receiving file before the questions. So, uh, Commissioner Leonetti, supported by Commissioner Duge. Please vote. <laughs> Okay, I know that popped up. Motion passes. Um, Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Sheriff Wickersham. <clears throat> and before you start, let me go ahead and get the motion to receive and file. Moved by Romano, supported by Sager. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. All right, well, good afternoon. Very modest uh, request here for our budget for 2020. Um, we did ask for a computer maintenance clerk. Um, we've seen an increase in uh, FOIAs uh, due to all of our body cameras and, and documentation, but um, I know that wasn't sent forward and, and we're okay with it at this point here. Um, over the years, the Sheriff's Office has, has many maintenance agreements for different softwares and different computer programs that are used at all of the um, units and at the office. Um, we've always found money, whether it's through forfeiture or, or other funding. Um, this year we just decided it all should be under one line item so we can keep track of all our maintenance agreements. So you see that uh, we requested that uh, an increase in the, that line item. Um, there's also an increase of just a little over $8,000 for our Tyler Technology maintenance agreement. Um, it was a 10-year contract that we signed in, up for. First five years uh, the cost were uh, exactly the same and now they will go up for the next five years of this contract. Um, <clears throat> we um, requested some additional funding in the law enforcement supplies um, for ammunition, vests, rifles. Um, we know that that wasn't forwarded to you, so we'll, we'll figure out where to, to get that money from. And um, we have a, um, a guardian sealer bags that we use for property that comes in. We take the property right off the inmate, put it in there, seal it up, and um, there's an additional cost for these bags. Um, we just didn't have enough money to, to go through the amount of inmates that we process in a year. So we asked for additional funding um, for that, which we received. So that's really our budget request. Um, the only other <clears throat> aspect that I think the board should be aware of, there is a uh, possibility of about a, over a million dollars of revenue that won't be coming um, to the county. Um, currently, we get uh, money for diverted felons. Um, that was line item vetoed by the governor. And uh, so as it sits there today, until uh, both sides could come together and work something out, um, uh, those straddle cell uh, offenders that are being sent to the county jail, we will not be getting reimbursed. Um, I have spoke to uh, Chief Judge Beernett. 
Um, I know a lot of sheriffs around the county are, are talking to their one circuit court judge and saying, send everybody just to prison and then you don't have to worry about it. But <clears throat> I think we got 19 of them. So uh, he's shared the letter that I received from the director of uh, the Michigan Department of Corrections. And um, hopefully uh, they can get to the table and we can get our revenue back or you guys will get the revenue back because that money goes into the general fund. Okay, and that was budgeted, right? Because that came after? Correct. That is correct. Okay, thank you, Commis Commissioner Gillette. I know you just said it, uh, but how much was that from the state again for that special fund? We, in 18, we got 1.1 1 .1 million. 1.1 1 .1 million. Thank yep. you, Sheriff. Yep. That's it. Any questions? the nerve of those two <laughs> Come on. chair smith thanks good afternoon tony thanks good afternoon, for joining us um the i noticed a uh, 246 thousand dollar reduction in the request for overtimes that have to do with the uh, from your uh, the the addition of the uh, sheriff's uh, deputies from last year or is it a projection of what's going to continue to happen with well, the added yeah i think that reduction is, is, is coming through finance um we're still playing catch up um, we have about, uh, I think I have 10 deputies that are, have gone through the police academy and we're waiting to promote. Um, I think we have 16 vacant positions right now. We just can't put everybody out there because we're, we're pretty much killing our trainers. Um, so we put three uh, new deputies out per shift with an FTO for three months. Um, so uh, we're, our budget was cut last year. Um, we're a little bit over, but we're eventually at this point where we're, we're going to get there. I would think by next year, those additional deputies you gave us last year are going to pay dividends and you'll see a little bit more of a reduction in the overtime. And, and how's it going with the attempt to fill? I know it was difficult to fill these uh, spots at some time. I mean, I know well, we give you more, but it, I mean, if you so you gave me more of the um, well. The problem I'm seeing now and we'll, we'll put this out there, folks, is that uh, I sent 15 people to the academy a couple academies ago and um, three of them left me right after they uh, graduated <clears throat> yep went to small departments that uh, pay more and and have pensions so and do we not I, I remember Detroit at one point having some we, we are going contract after. so to speak that uh, yep we're we're recouping hopefully we're recouping at least our academy cost and we're okay. working with Corp Council to try and recoup our uh, wages while they were in there too okay but um, yeah, so that was kind of a shock. Kind of figured it was coming, but we're getting there. So, All right, All right thank you. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Carabelli. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Um, at the time, I think it was uh, 13 deputies were authorized last year. You were nine short just to attrition at, at the time, I believe. You were okay. trying to fill with the 13 new that were given to you this year. How many are unfilled at this point? Do you know? We have 16 unfilled. 16 unfilled? <clears throat> yes. Okay, and you have 10 you said, I'm sorry, was it 10 you said? You I had? have, uh, what do I, we did the numbers today. I have six that are still waiting to be promoted, and I have two in the police academy. And I've got a couple pre certs that came in and are working in the jail that would have the ability to go out. Oh, so okay. we're getting there. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. This one might be for Steve. Steve, given that the governor has uh, vetoed this straddle cell revenue to us, um, and it's reflected in the budget now that we got it, w what are your plans? I mean, we don't know yet what she's ultimately going to do, but let's say that they, let's say, let's say the Congress up there, the legislature says, yeah, you vetoed it. We're not going to do anything about it. Are we going to change it? when we come time to adopt this? Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. If we really. have nothing, there's a million dollars of revenue in the sheriff's budget that may not may not be there. The other question I have, and I don't know if you have this, and this might go to you too, Tony, is, yeah. you know, straddle cell. I mean, do we have data on who went in as a straddle cell versus, do we have that? I don't know. Yeah, we, because okay. we have a person that does the billing. We have a, okay. a part-time employee that does the billing for the straddle cell, so. Um, I guess we should probably get that data huh, and find out, you know, how much how much yeah. we it costs us to put straddle cell prisoners in there versus you know how much we get and and see how much of it's going to hurt us should right. somebody should probably get that data 
until we know what's going to happen. Yeah, no, okay. we're, we're working on that, and so we're keeping track of that. And I guess for full disclosure, I guess the other aspect of the veto um, is that also with the legislature, they're trying to say that if you're going to get this money, that uh, we have to sign an agreement. Me as sheriff would sign an agreement that we would take ICE prisoners. So there's a little bit more of a of a little uh, caveat to the negotiations in Lansing. So, yeah. It's too bad Phil wasn't here. If Phil Kraft was here, we'd have a little insight on what's going on up there. But uh, maybe we'll ask him, see what's up. Yeah, it's all. Okay. You know, <laughs> all right. They're playing. So. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Commissioner Sager. Yeah, on a brighter note, I attended that um, hockey game you guys played against Romeo Firefighters, and uh, number 15, that's our sheriff. I'd like to congratulate you guys because you raised over $11,000 that went to St. Jude, and you got to be complimented for that. So it was a great showing. Forget the score, but you guys all had a great time. Got a butt kick. I hope more people... <laughs> I could put a new team together, trust okay. me. Mm. That won't happen again. You, you did good out there, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay, I think uh, Commissioner Gillette is next on the first round. Are you guys still want to speak? You're still on there. Uh, I didn't realize I was still on Okay, com I mean, no, Commissioner Brown is what I meant to say. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good afternoon. What about the road patrols? I also heard to talk that there was a veto of road patrol funding. Does that affect us at all to the degree? What degree? Yeah, our secondary us? road patrol. So that would be um, a sergeant and two deputies. But it's my understanding that they reintroduced legislation to put that back in, and I think that's going to the governor's desk. So that's our 416, our traffic unit. So that's we're monitoring that because if that funding doesn't come, then we have to reduce the staff on there too. But my understanding, the last I saw coming out of Lansing was the fact that there's legislation to put that back in. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Seeing no other speakers. Oh, you did? Oh, you tricked me. Chair Smith. Thanks. Tony, I just wanted to ask because I was led to believe that uh, the governor's veto weren't go wasn't going to affect our, uh, not from you, but that it wasn't going to affect our community. And I see already we're at a million dollars and possibly more. Is there anything else uh, that we're missing here on, on the vetoes that is, that's going to affect e either you guys or the jail? No, that was, those were the two big things. So we had the, uh, what's it? Yeah, the training, but I think that's coming back also. That's the M. Cole's money. But at this point, I mean, until it comes back, even if you think it's coming yeah. back, there's, and that's to the tune of, I mean, it's our budget. About 30, 30 some thousand dollars that, that we could use for M. Cole's training programs. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Sorry, the motion passes 11 to 0. Police Training Center. Are, I've got, are you doing this? Yeah, I'll just do it. That's, okay. I think it's the first time we've got this one in front of you. So this, this is a, um, uh, we belong to the, um, the Macomb Community College Advanced Police Training. This is a membership uh, fee that we pay to get a reduced rate, not only on the deputies or the cadets that we send through the police academy which is about a five hundred dollar reduction any type of training that the college puts on we get the reduced cost because we are members so we've been with this uh, consortium and, and paying this fee as long as i've been there we've actually reduced it a little bit so well i don't even know if the commissioners have their budget in front of them that is on page c64 in case anybody is curious. Um, I, I knew we could count on Commissioner Gillette to ask a question. Well, I'm just looking at it. Sheriff, you said it's come down a little bit, but I, I mean, looking at what's highlighted here, in uh, 19, uh, rather 18 was 13,450, and and then in 19 amended, it was 25,000. So it, it doesn't look like it's, I'm not, maybe I misunderstood you. Well, 
Is it 25? Okay. It's budgeted 25. We uh, negotiated about three, four years ago because um, we were paying a standard $25,000 to be part of the, um, the advanced police training. Um, we started to do a little um, accounting and found out we, because they weren't doing a very good job of providing um, courses that were applicable to our staff. And um, so we sat down with the public service director and we reduced that to about 14,000. Um, so I and see that we, was, actual was in 18 was about 14,000. Yeah. So you expect actual for 19 to come in about 14,000 14, as well? 14,250 to be exact. Okay. Yep. Great. Um, as long as they keep, you know, providing us good, uh, you know, good training uh, programs, which they're doing now. They've made some some changes uh, in their staff where, you know, there's a little bit more reaching out to the law enforcement community and seeing what training do, you, do your people need. So that's happening. So, but, uh, yeah, we were paying a lot of money, and we were sending people to Oakland County, so it really didn't make any sense to be part of that. But now they've changed, and things are better. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Duche. Just for fun, thank you for being here. Do, you, does, do any of these courses relate to SWAT or, or any of the SWAT systems? Um, they do provide <clears throat> SWAT training. Yeah. But for our SWAT team, you know, we do all our training in-house. Oh, you do? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, our, our team trains twice a month and once a Happy week bunch, the too. They are. And thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So motion to receive and file by Jimmy Tushu's Carabelli, supported by Andre Duge. Please vote. I won't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I told you yes. I told you at the last meeting I was going to do that. <laughs> no right motion passes. <laughs> New business. Does anyone have any? Uh, uh, Commissioner Ha. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a question. That uh, C64 page you referred to, they have under appropriations outside agencies and association. CENCOG is listed at 225,000. The whole column adds up to 816,000. Who owns these? Who owns these expenses? Who owns the expenses? Yeah, by department. This isn't in the sheriff's budget, is it? No, see, what we're doing is it's, it's because it's had its own page and mm -hmm. commissioners had questions about those. Right. Um, that one was on this agenda because the sheriff was here, but we will be looking at and discussing each and every one at the appropriate time when whoever would be responsible is in front of us. So my guess is like the SEMCOG one would either be, uh, would probably be when the county executive yeah. is in front of us. Okay. And I, I think, um, so Mac is on there, but Mac is a county commissioner um, organization. So I'm not sure that it belongs on that page. It's not, um, we tried to expand MAC to bring in like county executives, treasurers and things and commissioners voted it down. So it's technically a county commissioner organization. So individually, somebody will be explaining what's value added about each of these organizations to us. Is that what I'm That's hearing? That's the plan. Okay. Well, Leon, there's $816,000 at risk there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. You're welcome. Do, do, no. Do we have any do we have any more new business? Okay, seeing none, we'll close new business, public participation. Seeing none, we'll close public participation. Motion to adjourn by MyJack, supported by Gillette. Please vote. We're adjourned. <laughs>